Hey, what's up? It's Jake from Nimbus DevOps, and I'm here today to talk to you about using Cube Control to create a deployment. So, in the uh, video that I did on creating a cluster with the tutorial that Kubernetes provided, we did copy and paste a lot of commands. We didn't really explain what was going on. We did go over the theory, but now I kind of want to put the two together. So um, the goal is to just kind of learn a little bit about app deployments, and then we're going to deploy an app with uh, um, on Kubernetes with Kube Control. So on deployments, so we run, we have a cluster running now. Uh, if you don't have a cluster running, go back to my previous video and make sure you got it one running. And we're going to deploy a containerized app on top of it. So to do that, we have to create a Kubernetes deployment configuration. And the deployment tells Kubernetes how to create and update instances of our app. So once we've created a deployment, the Kubernetes control plane will schedule the app instances included in that deployment to run on individual nodes in the cluster. And once the app instances are created, the Kubernetes deployment controller continuously monitors these instances. And if a node hosting an instance goes down or gets deleted, the deployment controller replaces the instance with an instance of another node in the cluster. And that is where you get your self-healing mechanism to address machine failure or maintenance or whatever. Before this type of um, model, like this containerization orchestration uh, world existed, You'd have installation scripts that would be used to start applications, but they don't allow recovery from machine failure, right? Because if the machine dies, your installation scripts are no good. So by both creating your app instances and keeping them running across nodes, Kubernetes deployments provides a fundamentally different approach to app management. Um, and let me, let's see if I can pull this up. Uh, I'll get you a picture. Uh, let's see here. Here is a picture. Um, so if we look at this, we've got our control plane here and we've got our nodes as we discussed. And then we have, um, you know, all, like all the same stuff that you would expect on a node. But what we're adding here is we're adding a containerized application. And what we're doing is we're defining the deployment of that in the control plane. And then all of the node processes will um, manage this and make sure that our, our desired state is always uh, in place. So we're going to create and manage this deployment um, from the command line interface. I'll go ahead and clear my screen. And we're going to use the Kubernetes API to interact with our cluster, which um, you can just double check with the Kube control get um, actually let's just do cluster info. And we can see that I do have a cluster um, and we can do cube control uh, get nodes. And I can see that I have a node here. And yeah, we'll leave it at that for now. <laughs> so uh, next thing up, what we're going to do is we're going to deploy an app, right? So let's check this out. So in order to deploy the app, we just make sure that, again, you have everything installed and that it's working correctly um, and that you have a cluster started, started and uh, once you get all of that going, then you'll be ready to move forward. All right, so now that you got a cluster running, we're going to run a cube control command. And if you want to create a deployment, you'll simply type create deployment. And then we're going to name it. So I'm just going to name this. Uh, we'll use the Kubernetes bootcamp image. So I'm going to say Kubernetes bootcamp. And then what image do I want to use? I'm going to use the gcr.io slash google dash samples. And then we're going to use the Kubernetes bootcamp. Kubernetes uh, bootcamp. And we'll use version 1. All right. So now I have deployed my first application. It's so simple, so easy to do. Um, so this, this command did a couple things for you. It searched for a suitable node where an instance of the app could run, right? And we only have one available, so it's going to find that one. And it's going to schedule the app to run on that node. And then it's going to configure the cluster to reschedule the instance on a new node whenever that's needed, like something happens. And if you want to see your deployment, all you have to do is run kube control get deployments. And I can see that I have one deployment. And this is just a single instance of our application. So this instance is actually running inside of a Docker container on this node. 
So if we want to view this app, um, any of the pods, okay, so remember we have a node, and a node has a pod on it, um, and we can run cube control, uh, cube control get pods to see that, and we have one pod in here, and there it is. Um, but this is all running in a private isolated network. So by default, it's visible from other pods and services within the same cluster, but not outside of that network. And we can use cube control, where, but we're acting, we're actually interacting with the API endpoint to communicate with the application. So we're not actually um, interacting with the application directly. Um, so uh, we'll go over that later too, but we can use the cube control command to create a proxy that'll forward communications into the cluster um, in that private network. And the proxy, um, all you can do is you can just split the window right here and open a terminal so you can see it both. And all you have to do is run cube control proxy and it'll start to serve traffic in this proxy. So now this is actually using a proxy to communicate with this internal network. And um, we're basically connected our host, um, like this terminal, um, in the Kubernetes cluster. And the proxy enables direct access to the API from these terminals. Um, and we can see the API hosted through the proxy endpoint and query the version directly of the API using just a basic curl command. So if I type curl HTTP colon slash slash localhost on port 8001, and I just type version, I can use the API to get the version number. Uh, wrong version number, localhost port 8001, uh, curl SSL get record wrong version number. Uh, if it's not accept accessible, then it's possible that this didn't start correctly, but it's still open and running. Uh, let me double check one more time. Okay, wrong version number. Interesting error there. Okay. Let me see if I export, let me get the pod name and then I'll export, I'll echo this into a variable pod name. And then I can curl this exact pod name and see what happens. There we go. So there is an error. It says manifest unknown. And it may be just, oh, it's because I didn't uh, actually deploy this with the correct thing. So this is good, actually, because I can use this to show you. So let's get our deployments. Let me see that that's, that's running, right? But it's broken because it couldn't find the image because I spelled Kubernetes uh, wrong in, the, in here. So if I say Kubernetes delete deployment, and then I just called uh, the name Kubernetes Bootcamp, then it will delete the deployment. So if I get deployments now, it says there's nothing there. So if I go up into my command history and I can say, I wanna create a deployment, and this time I'm gonna spell Kubernetes correctly, Kubernetes, like that. <clears throat> now I've got this guy running. Let me restart my proxy. So the proxy's running, and I'm just going to curl this version, and I got the wrong version again. What is going on? Okay, let's get my pod name, and then let's export this, and then that's the name of our pod. And then let's curl that. There we go. Now it says it's pullable. All right, so I probably just did it too fast. So even though I made a mistake there, this is actually a good um, a good exercise in, in learning how to manage these deployments. And you can see it's really not that hard. And if I curl again on localhost and see what happens, HTTP uh, colon slash slash localhost on port 8001 slash version and there we go so yeah i think i just went a little fast so there you go so that's the version of kubernetes that we're running in our cluster and i'm actually getting this by communicating uh via the proxy so instead of using the uh, cube control command to communicate via the K kubernetes api the difference and why this is important to note is that i'm actually curling 
a port that's been exposed, 8001, that's um, serving, it's acting as a server, as a proxy server, and we're actually curling the version via the proxy, which is communicating with the backend uh, Kubernetes API in order to get the application directly. So there you go. Um, that is base, the basics of deploying an app on Kubernetes. Um, sorry for the mistakes, but you know what? Uh, it's a good learning experience. So if you have any questions, let me know. If you want to kill this proxy, just hit Control C. And if you want to do some cleanup, all you got to do is uh, Cube Control Delete Deployment and then or the name of the deployment, and then there you go. Hopefully you learned something. And uh, if you got any questions, let me know.